Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about AWPS, the Alicad WordPress starter theme for developers. Welcome again. In this video, we're going to take a look on the PHP aspect of the theme and how I structure it to follow an object oriented programming convention instead of a more procedural type of approach. So first of all, let's access the functions.php. That is the file that pretty much every theme uses to define all the features and option of a specific WordPress installation. So if we open the functions.php, that's going to look kind of weird because it's completely it's kind of empty there's nothing the only thing that this file does is other than giving you a bunch of instructions to tell you hey this is how it works it uh, checks if the auto load file from uh, a composer that we dynamically downloaded during the installation process it's available in the vendor folder in our case it's available here so that's perfect and if it's available it's gonna require it once and then it's going to check if the AWPS class in it is available, it exists, it's going to initialize that class. What is happening? What is this new AWPS in it? We don't have, especially in my project that I called Sabrina Miso, we don't have any AWPS folder, we don't have anything, and especially this init class, how do we know where it is? So. First of all, the AWPS is defined inside the composer.json file that we are using in the theme to uh, basically load all the vendor scripts that we need and to declare the autoload PSR4 option. In this case, the autoload PSR4 is set to use AWPS and AWPS, it's a refer, it's like a sim link to the config folder that we have in our theme. So AWPS is basically just config, it's an acronym, it's a, a, a sim link, it's a, just a custom name for the config folder. If you want to change this logic, you can do it. You can rename it whatever you want. You can rename it as like your theme folder or your project folder. If you do this, though, you have to update the composer. So you have to open the terminal and run composer dump dash auto load in this way composer will look again inside the composer.json file will check what type of name you decided to use for the auto load and it's gonna use that one of course be sure that if you change something and if you replace awps you have to update pretty much everything and the first thing that you have to do you have to update this awps inside the functions.php because you're not referring that anymore you're referring to your custom name but for now let's leave it as AWPS so we're not gonna get confused so the first thing that uh, the first and only thing that our functions.php does is initializing or calling a new instance of the init class inside AWPS so let's open the config folder and we have an init file that has the same name of the class that we're calling so Let's open this one and here we have the magic of PHP object oriented programming with the namespaces available thanks to Composer. So we are declaring that this init file has a namespace of AWPS because it's inside the config folder that we are calling AWPS. Then we have a class, let's ignore all these use for now. Um, we have a class declare called init, that is the actual class that we're calling here. So we're declaring a new instance of the init class. And this init class, everything that it does is during the initialization, during the construction of this class, calls a public method inside itself called init classes. This init classes is checking if the private static variable that is declared for itself is true. If it's true, it's gonna stop the execution of the init classes method. If it's not true, it's gonna follow through, do all the things that we want to do it, and it's gonna declare these two through. If you notice here at the beginning of the class, we have this private static variable set to false. This is a um, safety precaution in order to avoid to load these init classes method multiple times because if we load it once, we will update the value of this loaded variable to true. 
And this script, if we call this script again at the same time, or just like after half a second, or accidentally we recall another instance of the init class, and we just recently uh, generated all the files and all the instances that we need, we will have this variable set to true. So if this variable is true, it means that this method already ran and we don't need to run it again. So this return is gonna stop the execution of this method and it's gonna prevent you recall, reinitialize and recall new instances of classes that we already have and everything is already running. So that's that's the safety lock, the safety precaution. In order to uh, generate all these new classes that contain all the methods and declaration that our team uses, we need to tell the script, we need to tell PHP where to find these classes because right now we are saying just, okay, let's create a new setup, but this setup class is not here. We're not using a require, we're not using an include. So where is this setup class coming from? Simply it's coming from these use. So we are telling to our PHP script to use the tags class that is inside the AWPS core tags location. And basically if we follow the structure, or the folder structure of our config folder, you will find all these classes here. So for example, the tags, it's in AWPS, that's config core, let's open core, tags, we have tags. And if we open here, we have a set of namespace to say these tags, it's inside AWPS core, and the class name is tags. Pretty straightforward, right? Pretty clear. So because we are saying to the script, use this location, now we can simply create a new tags class. We are creating a new instance of this tag class. Basically what everything that this use does is just by simply having a sort of like require once config core tags.php. Instead of manually writing require once, instead of manually writing the structure like the URL, the path of the file with the file extension, we can use the namespaces. And using the namespaces is really handy because we remove a lot of extra typing that we don't need to declare anymore the extension of a file, we don't need to declare exactly the name of the folders, and plus we can define our own structure by defining the namespaces of every single file. And we can call directly that class inside the namespace. So just glancing at this, we can know immediately where these files are because this is the exact same file structure that we're using here. So that's that's pretty simple. Just take a look around and see all the methods that I declare. And uh, these methods are in order of importance for WordPress, kind of, or like the order that I think it's important. You can change the order, but doesn't really matter. So let's take a look at the enqueue that is kind of like the most standard method that WordPress, that a theme has for WordPress if we access, if we don't know where the enqueue is, just scroll back up, use AWPS setup enqueue. So AWPS setup enqueue is right here. In the enqueue class, in the construct, what we're doing, we are adding the action. We are using a built-in method of WordPress to add an action of WP enqueue scripts, and then we're calling our enqueue scripts. This way of calling it using an array and using the ampersand dollar this, it's because we're using a class structure. We're using an object oriented type of calling. Uh, if it was just simply procedural, we would have called our method in this way, just simply add action WP in script and then the name of the method that we wanna call. But because this structure is not procedural, we need to wrap the call of the method inside an array and then pass as a first variable this that refers to the actual class. So it's telling the script to look for this method inside this class. Pretty straightforward. Inside the method, of course, the methods and functions and functionalities of WordPress are the standard ones. We have the enqueue style that is grabbing the compiled minified CSS style and in script that it's grabbing as well, the minified main JS file. And then we have a check if we have a singular page, a comments open, or we have the thread comments option, the system will automatically enqueue the scripts for the comment reply features. Um, nothing weird here, you have the option I left in the comment to uh, deregister the scripts of the jQuery if you're planning to use jQuery not through the 
ES6 import JavaScript that I explained in the previous episode, you can enqueue it in this way or the register it and put your version, but it's totally up to you. Um, so probably now you have a question, why should I use this method? This looks really convoluted. Why should I declare namespaces for every file? Why should I call it in this way instead of using a, just a require? And why should I use classes instead of simply write the name of the function and call the function without declaring a class, wrapping the method inside the class and then initializing the class and then calling that method through an array with this variable. This like totally looks an overkill, totally is hyper convoluted. I totally understand your point. I totally see what you're saying, but this method will solve the main issue of WordPress and the main issue of WordPress is the situation of accidentally having a method or a function's name that has the same exact name of another one that you're already using. Because realistically, how many plugins are you gonna use in your theme? Probably more than 10, and it's kind of an average. And how many times did happen to you to have in your theme a method or a function named in a specific way and the name of the method is used identically in another plugin. So you have two functions with the same name and you cannot have those in PHP because you're gonna have a conflict. So this way of wrapping these classes or this method, the default method of WordPress inside classes will avoid completely this issue. That's why all the classes that I'm using, they have really common names. They have in queue scripts. This is like the most common method name ever. Instead, if we were using procedure, I would have used something like AWPS, my custom in queue script, just to avoid to have this method uh, declared by another plugin with the same name and that, that's that's kind of annoying especially having these really long methods name long functions name it's really convoluted having classes will help us to maintain our code linear easy to read like humanly readable and easier to maintain is way easier to understand what this function does without having all those extra character prefix in order to avoid conflicts in the future. The other reason is that OOP code, object-oriented programming, is really clean. It's way cleaner than procedural. Procedural will end up, especially if you have a really long project with procedural code, you will end up with massive files with many, many functions and a gigantic amount of lines of code. You don't want to do that. You want to maintain everything clean and tidy, split in specific files with less methods as possible per class in order to be more manageable, be more scalable, easier to work with. Uh, multiple developers can work in this structure without interfering on the same file with each other. And that's perfect. That's the beauty of the object-oriented programming. So now how do we use these methods on our file, for example, on our page or our post? That's really simple. We can actually call directly that method without passing through any weird stuff. So let's, for example, take a look at the content.php file that is inside the view folders. If we open this and we scroll down here where we access the entry meta container, you will notice here we have an AWPS core tags posted on. If you never use OOP, this could sound weird, but it's actually really easy and really readable. Let's read it together. AWPS, we already declared that and we already found out that AWS stands for our config folder. Core is our call folder. Tags is our tag file. And posted on, if we have this double column, it means in uh, PHP to access the method inside this class. So inside the class tags, there should be a posted on method that we are calling here. So if we open the tags class and we search for posted on, there you go. It's actually here. And uh, this function is a public static function because we are allowing the code to call this method directly, statically directly from whatever other file. So we don't need to initialize the class or reinitialize or create a new instance of the class and then call that method. We can call it directly, statically from within another file without doing anything crazy. So that's perfect. 
and what this posted on does basically just simple regular WordPress stuff. It grabs the time, it returns the date, and then echo a string with a posted on date by the author. And if we access the website, that's exactly what we are looking at here. If we could take a look at the content here, we have posted on May 13, that is the date, and by the admin, that is the author of this post. Uh, let's change it for now. So what we're doing here, we're simply calling this method because the method is echoing already something. If instead of calling it, instead of echoing, we would change it, we would have into a, like a return and we save it. If we go back in our front end here, we refresh, we wouldn't have the method because we're calling yes, the function, the method, but we're not echoing in any way. We're just returning. So we should put an echo here. So if we refresh now, we're going to have it back. Pretty straightforward, right? Because this method is returning a HTML and PHP string all together, I don't need to store this result inside a variable. So I can safely remove the echo and just simply, instead of return whatever value I'm going to have, and just echo it together because this script is not going to get called automatically inside the class if I don't call it directly. So I'm pretty safe. Inside the same file, there's another method that it's basically identical. We have the AWPS core tags and then entry footer. We're calling another method called entry footer that returns the actual footer of the post for the view. And that's pretty much it. All the files, they work exactly in the same way and they work in two ways, basically, or during a construct or during the construct of the class. So when the class gets initialized first inside the init.php file, we use a built-in action of WordPress to build the sidebar, create a custom post type or activate the appearances options and all those kind of sweet stuff. Or we have public static method functions that we can call directly inside our PHP files. So why don't you try it and you have fun, especially as I stated in the init.php file, why don't you try to use the custom.php that I left especially for you. Inside here, I created a, a fake placeholder function called custom post types to generate a custom post type for books. And here I listed all the attributes that you can use to customize the custom post type. But here you can do whatever you want. Let's try to create um, built-in action or initialize a built-in action from WordPress or create a public static function inside the custom and then call that public static function inside your own file. So let's have fun with PHP and object-oriented programming. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page on my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again guys and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding!